Now here's an example of finding an inverse where you're not just going to reverse engineer just by looking at it. This is one of those where you actually have to go through and do all the grunt work. And the first thing, of course, would be to rewrite this guy where the f of x is y. And then since we're talking about doing the, unless you're talking about doing the inverse, what do I have to do? Not yet. Multiply by 2x plus 3. Nope. Change the x to y and the y to x. So x is equal to y plus 5 over 2y plus 3. And then we want to clear those fractions. Because I'm following the steps. Because if I don't change the x's to y's now, I might forget later, and okay. I'll end up <laughs> right, right. right back here. I see it happen a million times. Now, if I take this 2y plus 3 and I multiply it to both sides, I get x times 2y plus 3 equals y plus 5. Now, keep in mind you're trying to solve for y, right? That means anything that has a y term needs to go on one side and everything else goes to the other side. So when I multiply this out, I have 2xy plus 3x equals y plus 5. Now, the rest of the stuff that I have going on here isn't so much focused on the inverse as it is algebra and getting y by itself. So I'm going to move the y over here. So we've got 2xy minus y. And move the 3x to the right, so that's negative 3x plus 5. That step right there is just, uh, it's just using the addition property of equality. What you do to one side, you do to the other side. The next part is where it gets kind of tricky. You okay. want to get y by itself. Factor out. So you factor out the y. When I do that, I have 2x minus 1. And how do I finish getting y by itself? Divide, Divide, Divide by the whole 2x minus 1. So I have that y equals negative 3x plus 5 over 2x minus 1. But remember, I, I'm, in, I'm in pink right now because I was in the inverse world. So how do I finish this guy? Change the y to the f, f of x. F inverse of x or inverse function is this guy right here. Is this something that you would have just said, oh, what are the order of operations and gone about it that way? Probably not. <coughs> now, I do want to point out some things here to you. Okay. Now, if you can see your original function and your inverse function, for this guy right here, if we were to identify the vertical asymptote, what makes the denominator equal zero? Because this is a rational function. What makes the denominator equal zero? X equals negative three halves. Your horizontal asymptote, since these guys have the same degree, is what? If they have the same degree, you do the quotient of the coefficients, so one over two. Right? So how do you know it's negative three halves? I take my denominator and I set it equal to zero. My denominator to zero. Oh, okay. Your y-intercept. If I plug in zero here for x, what do you get? Five thirds. Five thirds for your x-intercept. The x-intercept is when you set the numerator equal to zero. If I set this numerator equal to zero, what do I get? I get negative 5 comma 0 for my x-intercept. Do you agree? Now, let me do this. And on the horizontal, we just plug 0 into x, right? Horizontal asymptote? Yeah. No, the horizontal asymptote is determined by you have the same degree in both the top and the bottom. So, oh, so it's, it's the quotient of those lead coefficients. Now, I'm going to use the pink marker to talk about the information we have here with this guy. Tell me what you know about your vertical asymptote. 
What makes this denominator equal zero? Oh, one half. X equals one half. What's the horizontal asymptote for this guy? Since these guys have the same degree? A little more precise, y equals negative 3 halves, right? Since we're talking about asymptotes, asymptotes are lines. What is your y-intercept? If I plug in 0, what do you get for? Negative 5. Zero, negative, five. negative 5. And for your x-intercept, what makes this numerator equal to 0? Positive 5 thirds, 0. Do you agree? Now, I maintain that these two functions, f and f inverse, are, the, the, I maintain they're inverses, right? I want you to see something. Look at your vertical asymptote. Is neg x equals negative 3 halves, right? If I'm switching x's for y's and y's for x's, that means that I would have y equals negative 3 halves for my inverse. My inverse has y equals negative 3 halves, so what was a vertical asymptote is a horizontal asymptote on my inverse. Same thing when I talk about the horizontal asymptote for my original, you see the similarity with the vertical asymptote, right? And now look at your x and y intercepts. Your y intercept is 0, 5 thirds. And I said earlier that for, the, for a point that's on one function, you flip those coordinates around and you get a point on the inverse. And you see the same thing happen with your x-intercept to your y-intercept. So you see how the x's become y's and the y's will become x's. We're flipping everything about the y equals x line. 